Disneyland was not like anywhere else on Earth. When I started working at the park, the employees were so happy to be there. The company appreciated you. At least it did. Having the last name Disney is like having a weird superpower you didn't ask for. But then one day, I got a message from a guy named Ralph who worked at Disneyland. How many of you know somebody who works at Disney who slept in their car in the last oh. couple of years? How many of you know somebody who have gone without medical care because they can't afford it? <laughs> the American dream teaches us that if you work hard enough, anything is possible. It's magical thinking. Dr. Disney. Disney could raise the salaries of all of its workers to a living wage. It was possible to do this when my great uncle and grandfather built the company. It's possible now. That is socialism. There we go. We socialism. know what that is. We're the people who do the pixie dust tonight. You scrub the kitchens, the floor, the toilets. With both of us working full time, we still fall below poverty level. A custodian would have to work for 2,000 years to make what Bob Iger makes in one. The Disney company is round zero of the widening inequality in America. You know, I think of it as the assholification of America. This isn't just a Disney story. It's the story of nearly half of American workers who can't make ends meet. I have this passion growing within me now, building power for working class people like me. If you could tell Disney anything, what would you tell them? We'd like to be able to have a home. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Corey, or whoever's at the driver's seat. You guys are great. So, Adam, I'm gonna I'm gonna start you. We'll we're we'll start a recording. Um, I'll, you have 20 minutes, and I'll give you a two minute warning via uh, chat. Got it. Thank you. Uh, excuse Hi. me, ladies. I was uh, about to subscribe to the All Ears podcast. So hold on. <laughs> Just hold on. Highly recommended. <laughs> so, fact, so we're talking uh, about a new season coming up. So great. That's great. Uh, and uh, since I brought it up, we'll just say that uh, this is where you bring on individuals out there uh, who uh, d for conversations about uh, such things as, uh, let's see, uh, in, 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 uh, inequality and race and 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 sort of uh, superficial issues such as that. Those <laughs> <laughs> is it ever get too intense? I mean. I'm, I don't know what too intense means. <laughs> I'm a real pain in the ass. In other words, I can really be a pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, well, you know, maybe that's just just the uh, the right recipe right now. Um, yeah. uh, Abigail, I've been uh, Kathleen. So, so very pleased that to have arranged this when you're you're being here in Abigail as many years have been chasing after you, um, you know, bring out a lot of great documentary filmmakers over the years. So I'm really just excited to have you both on. So thanks for fitting this in and making this happen. Hey, I wonderful. feel like a, another bucket list item. <laughs> <on this> crest. <laughs> Thank nice. you. Nice. Very flattering. Now let me uh, rake you over the coals. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> hang around. it's not my style. But I, I, Abigail, um, we'll start. I have a question about this. Now, you, this documentary, it's called The American Dream and Other Fairy Tales. Um, it's sort of a combination of a personal documentary. Kathleen, you directed it. With Abby, yes. With Ab the two of you co-directed, excuse me. So yeah. you are, it's a kind of on one level, a personal documentary about your, you, you and your the history of your family. On the other hand, it's also about um, much more about, um, you know, salary and equity, of, uh, yeah. et cetera. Um, it's about what's going on in the country today, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean it's which about, affects everything yeah exactly it's about disney but it's really about most big companies mm -hmm. and, our, and our 
yeah, it's it, right. Disney is 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 almost just an arbitrary s- example of what's going on, you know, a bin, or been going on. So, yeah. and I just want to get out of the way also before I bury this is that uh, the film, this documentary opens in Orlando, um, uh, you know, which makes a lot of sense on September 16th, and then in New York City and additional markets and on VOD on the 3rd of September. Did I get the dates yes. right? 23rd, 23rd of September. The 23rd. I, I that, that that's VOD. that makes more sense because I put the 16th first. Uh, yeah. The 23rd. Okay. Uh, so on September 23rd in New York City, other markets. Hopefully, it will spread nationally because this uh, and it should because, of course, as we were just saying, this affects everybody just about except for a select few lucky folks. Yeah, exactly. But but that's, this is not kind of the point, isn't it? <laughs> but I've heard you talk about your family in the past and and you know even though you're not involved in the disney company that is what we're discussing and what the film is about um directly you've sort of been tangentially this is a big part of obviously your your identity your world and so and i know from seeing you talk about it over the years that this has been on your mind i'm just wondering why now why have you decided to make this film now? And Kathleen, feel, feel free to join in on that because you bring a lot of uh, experience in your work with with uh, PBS affiliates work that you've done. Yeah, you know, the main impetus for me to move into motion was being reached out to by Ralph, the cast member who reached out to me. I, you know, it had been gnawing at me for a long time. A lot of things had been gnawing at me for a long time. I've worked you know, for, for a long time in, in uh, not-for-profits and filmmaking and all kinds of stuff around social justice issues and particularly poverty. And, um, you know, it, it, there I was like with my last name connected to a company that was um, blithely going forward without regard for the impact it was having on the community it was in and on the people who work there. It just felt like it, when it's that much in your backyard, you just can't keep pointing everywhere else forever. You just had to. So when Ralph reached out to me, it was like the straw on the camel's back. You know, I just had to act on it. Did you feel um, any, this is a personal question, but did you feel like a, 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 a that a, some level of defensiveness around your family too at the same time yeah. or is there ambivalence i've been i've been i've been in my life um on this um seesaw between feeling defensive no doubt angry and disappointed and on the other side of the seesaw very proud um very happy to be related very feeling very privileged about it i it's really difficult not to be constantly going back and forth between those extremes because that that is a company that contains all the extremes and so I, I guess I maybe was listening too close in the uh, Catholic Church I was brought up in <laughs> but I I carry a sense of guilt and responsibility for the problematic aspects um and I don't feel like I can um, comfortably you know live in the soft and and warm glow of of the nice parts without also looking really honestly at the dark parts. Um, and you mentioned cast members. I just want to, as one of whom reached out to you uh, and that kind of was the catalyst for yeah. the film, but a cast member at Disney is what they call their employees, oh, cast yeah. members. I, I just thought I'll just, Kathleen, you, <laughs> yeah. and thank you for your um, candor appreciate it uh kathleen you uh as i mentioned you bring a history of 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 doing work on documentaries about uh this type of subjects don't you yeah i i work with bill moyers at public television and at frontline what a hero television and yeah yeah he's wonderful um and he's uh still writing great columns and it's worth it's worth looking up his website but anyway um we started following working people in milwaukee wisconsin in uh the year, the year in 1999. Oh, I thought it was no. a little later, 2002. I thought, but go ahead. Uh, yeah, we start. We followed. What do I know? Well, that was when. <laughs> well, the first, we started. We we went to Milwaukee in 99. We started filming with people, and we followed them um, for about 22 years. 
And um, we wound up with a series on Frontline called Two American Families. And, and essentially what, what we found was that people were doing everything they were being told to do um, uh, as the economy was changing from a manufacturing economy to a service economy. Um, they were getting retrained, you know, they were, they were going back to school in, you know, they were, but they, it turned out everybody had to work two or three jobs and that wages were just stagnant and that, you know, um, it was very, very hard to be a working person in America. And, and that's just, again, that's just a, a story we all know right now, but, but I, and I, so I think that the opportunity to work on this story, which was a, a look at trying to you know we, we're trying to figure out in this film what how it all came to be <laughs> that you know um hard work no longer is rewarded in america did it ever occur to you to prompt abby can i call you abby because uh, the name the are call you abby yeah. to 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 do a film sooner about her family because this wouldn't be a natural or was the other your other project again it's called um what was it called the uh, uh two american two, families. Two, two american families um no well abby i think i think uh we were working on other projects but yeah. um but once abby met and started talking to ralph you know i definitely knew there was a potential for a project there um you know but um, and I don't and I think she did, too, because <laughs> I, I think we both both of us, as as Abby was saying earlier, have cared about this subject for a very long time. And it didn't take that long for us to go, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, this is this is a, this is the way to get at this this subject through the most pop, you know, with it by using the name Disney. Hmm. The documentary is called The American Dream and Other Fairy Tales. I get the pun in there that. <laughs> And it's co-directed, right? Kathleen yeah. Hughes and Abigail Disney. Um, and Abby, uh, I, when I saw uh, uh, these cast members, uh, not just Ralph and his wife, mm -hmm. but many of them, they 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 were so uh, they all seemed so uh, choked, choked. They all felt so stressed and tense because not only economic pressures, but because they also have this what appeared to me anyway as an ambivalence, like deeply ambivalent about. They also seem to have a great amount of pride about working for the Disney company, and you well, know, well, at the same time, if after a while it just takes such a toll on you because you're not getting back. You know, you feel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the company has a long history of people self-selecting for work there on the basis of having really good intentions and wanting to be good people. And so many of the people who work at the parks in particular see themselves as doing a good in the world. You know, they're helping families be together and making memories and like they see themselves as do-gooders. And, and they are grateful to Disney for giving them the chance to do that. And they're grateful just to be near the Disneyness of Disney, you know, and um, I, that's one of the things that really made me want to make this film because I feel like the company at a certain point, the cynicism just crept so deeply and up to the top at the company yeah. that they just don't think that that's yeah. an important quality in a worker. And, and they don't, they don't value even, it. You don't think, even if you think it's not an important quality, you should at least honor the workers who give you that loyalty. And um, I, I remember seeing it in them as, as a young child. And so I knew it was there and I wanted to show people that because it's really important to see that even the workers who think you know of their job as the most important job in the world can't withstand this kind of disrespect and, and maltreatment. No, that's very true. It just eats away. It does slowly eat away at you. And yeah. Um, and then you st you first turn your uh, I'm not a psychologist I know that comes as a shock but if you first start turning that kind of anger towards yourself what am I doing yeah. wrong what's wrong with me right. yeah and, and then you realize oh wait no there's something I, I I think it was not true during the course of the making of this film that Bob Iger the CEO of the of the Disney company becomes a billionaire yes sure. he became yeah. a billionaire and Bloomberg, I love that Bloomberg News quietly reported that yeah, yeah. no one else really you know, yeah, made a big headline out of it. But go ahead. 
Sorry. No, no, but this is why I, I say these things to prompt also. <laughs> I know that. Uh, and, and I wanted to mention, I just looked this up, although this comes up in the film also, but I just, just wanted to be a little bit more prepared. I, I looked up the current statistics. The average CEO to median worker pay ratio is 235.1. No, excuse me, 235.21. 235, I thought I wanted to make sure I got every part of the number, in, but I, those are two numbers on either side of a colon. So 230, 235 to one that's in, as of two, 2020, which is probably when you were making the film, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, yeah. Yeah. And that's um, the average. Um, that's not, you know, doesn't billionaires. people yeah. who are way out there on the extreme end of it. And it doesn't account for, uh, I mean, I think that's just salary. I may be wrong, but I think that's just salary. Doesn't, no, that's, doesn't... that's compensation, total compensation. Total compensation. Okay, well, phew, so it's not so bad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you point out um, also how your, uh, in, in the, in, in American Dream and um, other fairy tales starts off with a bit of archival and we we meet Roy and we meet Walt. Roy is Ab Abigail's grandfather, Walt, her great great uncle, and how they started in there. And their ratio was considered probably really high, but you know, um, it, compared to today, it's 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 well, it's uh, you know back then people didn't even really talk about ratios because they right. weren't that much of a problem. I mean, see, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, did not see their job as a one way ticket to impossible wealth. You know, it just wasn't that wasn't the, in the cards. What do you expect from the uh, uh, the premiere at, um, well, the film premiered at Sundance festival-wise, but now it's going to have its what sounds like its theatrical premiere right in Orlando. Yeah. Can you describe what your, what, what's going into that premiere? So, I mean, Orlando is in many ways the mothership, even more than yeah. Anaheim, because of the size and, uh, and mm. the role plays in the company's idea of itself. And and I have very, very um, vivid memories of 1971 when my grandfather opened the park. You know, I, I have vivid memories of his last five years, which were spent, you know, diligently getting the park, you know, up and running because his brother had died way too soon. And his he saw his job in life as to protect Walt. So he gave himself to that. And two months later, after the opening he passed away of a cataclysmic aneurysm so you know wow. he really gave himself to disney world so so i have complicated feelings about the place um and uh and i know as i meet people from orlando over the years all my life i get this big reaction to my last name it's different than meeting anybody from any other kind of place because sure. there's a feeling there that there's a relationship to the company and to the park that for a long time was such a positive one. And in the last 10, 12 years or so, it's not such a happy thing to meet me for an Orlando person as he once was. And, and there's just a real struggle between the place and, and the company that, that it breaks my heart. It doesn't have to be that way. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a real low wage area of the country I know. too. Um, housing is- It sets it's, the tone. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's a troubled spot. Um, yeah. There's yeah. a, if you go a, maybe a few blocks past the parking lot, in other words, you'll yeah. be surprised. Is it, what's right. the, and what's the uh, situation in Anaheim? Is it similar? Very similar. Is it, mean, it really? You know, yeah. They, I mean, they, you know, like I said, there's so much to talk about. We very briefly right. alluded to the parking lot in Anaheim, but that's just a small taste of the way in which the companies, I was saying I'm calling the film company town just because America is a company town now. Um, the corporations have have savaged the federal government and the state and local governments for as much as they can take out of them in the form of tax benefits and subsidies and you know right. low wage workers that they immediately pawn off onto the government when they are not you know no, we I have mean, time the taxpayers yeah. are paying right. for the food that that Disney doesn't pay its workers enough to buy. Uh, Disney well, gets tax breaks for the food bank that it yeah. donates to that its own workers <laughs> go to. I mean, yeah. you know, as an example, <laughs> so yeah. it's it's a system that's very broken. Yes. And at, at, at the same time, we're uh, there is a, you know, a, for some reason it's it's a difficult to just just get, uh, give uh, the student loan relief um, to. <laughs> 
debt, mm -hmm. people yeah. that are going into deep debt for the most of their lives. Um, so yeah, these things are hopefully now thrust into um, our national conversation and the film will bring up the topics like that. And um, I urge people to go see it because it's a great documentary. It's called The American Dream and Other Fairy Tales. And again, don't want to botch this up, ladies. Uh, <laughs> It's opening. It's premiering in Orlando. You can have some of the cast, some of the cast members. Terrible. Uh, you're gonna have some of your subjects. We'll have. Present. Um, we'll have. I'm not sure who's gonna be there yet, but we're also weekend. inviting as many of the workers from Disney and, and all the other parks to come. Right. As, but you know, we're gonna try and get as many workers in there as we can. Bob, I know you're watching. <laughs> Put on your big boy pants. <laughs> Go. I think people would welcome you actually quite warmly. It's my guess. At least, you know, not, not give you a shot at, at explaining your position <laughs> on all these things and people, why people are living in their cars. Yeah. Uh, and it opens in New York city and on, on demand video on demand on the 23rd of, of September. Yes. So anyway, thank you guys. And um, it was really so excited that you both came on. Thank you for, for doing that. Thanks and for have, having us. Have a Wonderful. good luck with the great have a great premiere and see you soon, I hope. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.